that adds a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. Good morning again. We are thrilled to be together in the house of the Lord on Sunday and this particular Labor Day. We want to remember together that on the seventh day, God rested. And so this must be a very special God's Day when we honor rest from labor. What would God do on a day off? What did God do on a day off? If we think about it just a little bit, we realize that just before God's day off, God made human beings and pronounced the creation very, very good. So on the seventh day, God relaxed and sat back and beamed over all that had been created. Then we fast forward into the time when our scriptures today were written, which goes many, many years, thousands of years forward, maybe more. <laughs> and we hear about a body that had been created and this body was pronounced. There, were, there was a man and there was a woman, and the bodies were pronounced very, very good. And so here we hear the story in 1 Corinthians where the body is pictured as not connected with each other. So you have a hand that doesn't need anything else or eyes that certainly don't need those ears. And so something happened between when God started creation and pronounced it very, very good, and somehow creation got off track. And the message to us on, in this scripture, I think, is twofold, if not more than that. One is that the scripture about the body is, of course, a metaphor for the body of Christ. In addition to that is a picture of how we relate to our own bodies. So we've got, we can think of our congregation, but we can also think about how we relate to our own bodies. If God said our bodies are very, very good, why do we not name them very, very good? Today we're going to focus on God's joyous plan for you and me, knowing and living Jesus' outrageous love. Jesus is outrageous, knows no bounds, reaches out to us beyond all things, is present even now. And we remember from Jeremiah 31, 31, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans for success and not for failure. When we look at the Bible and we read the Bible, we can come at it with many, many different eyes. We can look at the Bible as one of judgment and austerity, or we can feel the body's appreciation and nourishment that comes from studying the Word of God. Because we humans cannot be human without a body, that's the definition of being alive, that we're in a body. And we've inherited not only this legacy of delight in creating human bodies, but we've also inherited a lot of anxiety about it. And some of it's in the scripture. There, some of, it, some of the parts tell us that our bodies are bad and we should whip them. <laughs> and we should feel bad about feelings that we have in our bodies. There's another message in there that is very strong and very compelling. And that one today people are more ready to hear. Which is God pronounced us whole from the beginning. And that's the original blessing 
and the one that God calls us back to. We, when we fight within ourselves, we hate things going on in our bodies. We hate getting old. Does anybody else hate getting old? Stop it. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, some days we feel that way, don't we? But what a privilege to live in these blessed bodies. What a privilege to be able to tune in to the love energy that is there for us from the very beginning of creation up until right now. I want to point out three things from the scriptures that are very significant to us as a church. Jesus gave us the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Jesus gave us the body of Christ. We have the body of Christ individually and all of us together, just like cells in our bodies, organs in our bodies, systems in our bodies, they all fit together. On Labor Day, we want to remember how much God loves each one of us and has given us a story, a story that began when we were brand new and has gone all the way up until today. And when we're open and safe, we can talk with each other about what Jesus has done for us to help us know the power and the energy and the faithfulness of love. The faithfulness and power of love through Jesus Christ is not like anything else I have ever experienced. Can you say that too? There's a uniqueness about Jesus Christ and his love for us that watches over us and takes us through every step of the way. The church is called to this kind of love, which is unconditional. It is the love that we experience at the communion table. We don't have to qualify, we just have to want to come, to be nourished, to be fed, to be reminded that this love chapter that we have here is about God's nature. Sometimes we read it like we should always be agape and we should always be patient and we should always be perfect. Well, good luck. <laughs> We're not going to get to perfection and that's the perfection of it. If we were per perfect by ourselves, we wouldn't need to be alive. We would not need to be in a body. We would not need anyone to love us. We would not need anyone to feed us or to cheer with us or to celebrate with us because we'd be perfect. Now the joke about that is that we are anyway perfect. We're perfect because God made us and said we were very, very good and that love is not only very, very good, but it's all there is. And on Labor Day, what better time to lean back into the arms of God and to allow all the troubles, all the pressures, from behind that push and tug and make us worried. Just lean back into the arms of God and allow those to dissipate because we are in the most loving God field that we could have 
we learn to tap into it over again and over again because sometimes the world seems more like the body at war with itself. Not only sometimes in churches, but businesses and families and countries. What we need is love. What we have is love. Love abiding and faithful. What does it mean that these three things abide? Faith, hope, and love. Faith, I'm going to define as a positive and loving relationship with the inner divine that we call Jesus. That's faith. It's a relationship. We don't whip that up. It's something that we do. It's something we enjoy. Hope. Hope is that passion in us that the one who made us good, the one who made us for a relationship, is going to give us what our heart desires. That desire that was planted in our hearts by the very creator who made us is being watched over by the divine one. And we just have to keep it alive. That's all. The relationship does that. But the greatest of these is love. Because Jesus is love. Jesus brings all things together. Inside of us, in our bodies, in our psyches, and in our worlds. We need to remember that the perfection of love is being worked out in us now. But it's already there. It's just a matter of communing with it. One of the greatest gifts that Jesus Christ has given to me and to you is a new self. That when we enter into relationship with Jesus, there is a partner, a hope, a faithfulness that will lead us through anything. So I'd like for you to think about this morning, where in your life do you want more love? Is it in your feeling relationship with God? Do you need to feel God's love more? This is not just a thought. It's most likely that that's true of all of us. We need to feel God's love more su successfully, consistently, and powerfully. And it's available when we ask. So don't believe all that separate talk about the hand and the foot don't need each other. We do talk like that, don't we? When we're talking about communities and politics. We are all in this together, and that is a very good thing. When we come to church, we come for sanctuary. We come for safety that will reinvigorate our entire bodies, our minds, and our spirits. We come to be fed by the word of God, and so we are. Let us pray.